Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Home Sense with Nell, where I'd like to talk about home and garden DIYs on a budget. First off, let me say thank you for taking time out to visit my channel today. I know there are so many great gardeners on YouTube that you could be spending time with and you chose to spend a little bit of time with me, so I appreciate that. So guys, it's been a while since I've done a garden tour. Um, I've just been really busy and I know everyone else has too. But there's a lot of growth going on, so I wanted to get out here and share a little bit with you today. So let's get started. So I'm in zone 10A in Southern California, and today was a nice 80 degree day. And I'm out here in my backyard, and I'm just going to share with you what I have going on. It's Saturday, June 25th, I believe, 2022. So first off, this is a surprise. Believe it or not, these are sweet potato leaves. I planted some sweet potatoes here maybe about a year ago, and I think I forgot to harvest them. So now we're getting some good growth for the summer of 22, and I can't wait to harvest these. Hopefully we get to eat them before the gophers do. And here are some geraniums. If you guys have been with me a while, you know I like to plant geraniums because um, first of all, they're beautiful and easy to take care of. And secondly, my mom and grandmother both grew them, so I just like to have them around my garden. There's another geranium right there. And on to my little DIY box that I made. I made this box one day um, I was just looking for the most cost-effective way that I could make a garden bed. So I went and got a couple of 2x4s and just built this really quickly. And in my garden, I like to use transplants from the garden center as well as start things from seed. And this year I was getting a little adventurous with my tomatoes. And I'm trying to grow something that I've never grown before, which is the black crim. So many of my garden mentors here on YouTube, they rave about this tomato, the black cream. So I really was excited about tasting it. So here's my first black cream plant. And I, as you can see, the tomatoes aren't quite ready to harvest, but they're coming along. They're still very hard. I like the interesting striations on there. I can't wait to try that. And then here we have dino kale, which is really, all of my brassicas are suffering from a lot of pest pressure, as you can see. I've been out here spraying with neem oil, but it's not doing much good, as you can see. I might go ahead and pull them. I'm not quite sure yet. So I got two kale, dino kale plants in this bed. And then over here, I wanted to be adventurous and try another variety of tomato that I've never tried, which is the green zebra. Now the reason I chose this one, because as a kid I remember we would eat fried green tomatoes and we would get our green tomatoes from the grocery store and they were nothing more than red tomatoes that weren't ripe. We'd ask the grocer if he'd give us a couple of unripe tomatoes and we'd take them home, slice them up fry them in cornmeal and they were delicious. So when I saw this particular variety that intentionally matures to green, I had to try it. So we'll try those later on. And this is what those look like. They have an interesting shape. They're more spherical than any other tomato that I've grown, so I can't wait to try these. And over here next to this sago palm, we have yellow pear tomatoes. Now, a couple years ago, I grew some yellow pear tomatoes. I was really disappointed with the flavor. They were so pretty to look at on the plate, but they just didn't have a good flavor. But then the following year, I got a volunteer yellow pear tomato plant uh, on the other side of the yard, and the flavor was exquisite. So I think it just all depends on the particular plant you get and probably the nutrients in the soil. So I'm gonna go, I decided to go ahead and give it a try this year again and get another yellow pear tomato plant. And as you can see, this one is really producing a lot of fruit, though nothing is ready to eat yet. 
And next to that I have Dino Kale. Again, lots of pressure on this. I don't even know if it's worth it to keep trying to fight these bugs. Plus it's really hot, so I might just go ahead and pull that out and plant again when it starts getting cooler. Here's a better bush hybrid tomato that I actually bought by accident. I thought I had put something else in my cart and when I got home, I realized it was a better bush tomato, which is not bad, but this year I really wanted to try something more exotic. <laughs> Guys, let me know if that's ever happened to you. Have you ever bought the wrong plant by accident? Okay, so that's all for this little area of my garden. Next, I'm gonna show you a Moringa plant that one of my coworkers gave me last year, right before winter time, and I was worried that it wouldn't come back. I know Moringa is a tropical plant that doesn't like the cold, so I didn't know how well it was gonna do over the winter time. I did keep it in this pot and I kept it close to the house, and it seems like it's coming back okay. I do see some yellowing there, so maybe it's time to fertilize a little bit more, but we'll see. Moringa is a very nutritious plant. It's eaten very commonly in other parts of the world, not so commonly here in the U.S., but I'm looking forward to trying it. And here I have a curly parsley. And I don't know if you guys remember, I did a review of this planter. This planter was provided to me by Emerging Green, which is an awesome Amazon company, or they sell products on Amazon, I should say. They offer home and garden products at a great price and they are really interested in eco-friendly products so i suggest you guys try them out this planter box is very durable i haven't had any problems with it okay next let's go around the swing and i'll take you to the other part of my yard where i have a lot of potted vegetables again i have another geranium there i like the pink color on that one now this tomato plant is producing a lot and I don't know what variety it is because unfortunately I purchased this as a transplant. I think it was in a tray of eight plants. I don't remember which one this is, but it is producing some beautiful tomatoes. But I'm wondering if it's also on its way out because you see all the brown leaves in the plant. If someone out there knows, let me know the life cycle of this tomato plant almost over or is it lacking some nutrients is there something I can do about this so right under this tomato I have oregano this oregano is fantastic it has a very very pungent flavor it's great in spaghetti sauce we've had it actually in spaghetti sauce last night I'm gonna harvest this and dry it out and encourage more growth from this oregano plant and right next to that is stevia. If you guys want a fantastic natural sweetener, grow some stevia. It is, it is sweet, uh, carb-free as, as far as I know. It tastes great in your beverages, and it's pretty hearty. I haven't, it's not difficult to take care of. I have had to cut it back a couple of times, but other than that, it's doing great. And here's the bay leaf. I was so excited to find this. I looked everywhere for my own personal bay leaf tree. Because bay leaf is something that you add to so many soups and stews. And it comes in such small quantities from the store. So I thought, rather than run out to the store all the time to buy more bay leaf, why don't I just get my own plant? So that's what I did. It's doing great here. Next to that are dill plants, which are bolting, unfortunately. Dill is one of my favorite herbs. I really like to eat it with fish or even potatoes. I just really love the taste of dill. I was hoping this plant would stick around or be usable <laughs> a little bit longer, but I think it's just getting too hot for it. I'm gonna leave it here though because the butterflies really like this. The butterflies love to fly around the garden and land on the dill. And I'm wondering if they're drinking nectar from the flowers. I can't tell, but they enjoy it. Next to that is my 
I believe it's called a Thai Beauty Bougainvillea. This was a gift from my daughter. And because of that, I'm trying to do my best <laughs> to keep it blooming. Historically, I have bad luck with bougainvillea because I overwater them. Bougainvillea doesn't like a, a lot of water. So I have to purposely remind myself that every time I come out here to water these pots, don't water the bougainvillea. Next to that, I have my pot of strawberries. These are a couple different varieties of strawberries in here. Um, oh no, I lost one. They have delicious, sweet and tart taste. One thing I do notice about these strawberries is that you have to harvest them very frequently or else you end up with dried strawberries. And you end up with strawberries that fall on the ground and become food for ants. These strawberries were actually planted, uh, I believe last year. So this is not their first year. This is their second year and I'm noticing a lot more production this year. Behind that is rosemary. One thing I've noticed about the rosemary, it also doesn't like too much water. So just like the bougainvillea, I don't water it every time I come out here. I only water it about once every 10 days or so. As it gets hotter in the summer, I will probably increase that to maybe every five days, but we'll see how it goes. Guys, I am so proud of this pepper plant. This is the Mad Hatter plant that I bought last year, and it is coming back beautifully. Look at those peppers. Once these ripen up and turn red, I'm going to have a great time picking them, slicing them, and adding them to my stir fries and other dishes. And this one, I didn't cut this pepper plant back. I should have. I just pretty much left it here and abandoned it. <laughs> and then I noticed in the spring it was producing a couple of peppers. Um, I believe these are called the candy stripe peppers. And when they're ripe, they're very festive to look at because they remind me of a carnival. I guess I won't get too many peppers off of that plant just because I failed to cut it back, but we'll enjoy what it does produce. And next to that I have chard. If you guys have been with my channel a while, you know that chard is one of my favorite vegetables because it is super, super simple to grow. I think it's one of the easiest vegetables to grow. It's very easy to harvest. It has a mild flavor, so it tastes great if you stir fry it or even add it to soup. I really like chard. A lot of times I grow rainbow chard. This one is just the, I think it's called the Ford Hook. The Ford Hook chard has a white stock rather than multicolored stocks, but they all taste great. And next to that, here's some mint. Mint is another very easy to take care of plant. Oh my gosh, just me run, running my hands on it, I can smell the delicious mint aroba. It's wonderful. If you don't already know, mint is very aggressive and can be very invasive. So if you decide to grow mint in your garden, make sure you keep it in a pot. If you put it in the ground, it will take over the whole space. It's wonderful. And over here, here's my little nursery. decided to start some morning glory seeds because morning glory is actually a beautiful plant that I enjoy from my childhood <laughs> and it is so easy to grow so I decided to go ahead and start some plants here um, eventually I might train them to go up a trellis I'm thinking of trellising putting a trellis on this hillside somewhere once I get it cleaned up so that'll be very nice. And if I do that, of course, you guys will follow along with me. Next to that, I planted some blue phlox, but those haven't come up yet. I started these seeds just about four days ago, so I'm gonna give it some time. I am keeping them evenly moist though because we're having quite warm days. Okay, now here's the embarrassing part of my garden, guys. As I said earlier, I've just been busy, as we all have, and I've kind of been neglecting my garden. So, 
look at my zucchini. I feel terrible about this because this zucchini is probably no longer edible. I'm judging by the color of it. It's huge. It's still heavy. It's still hard. But I've been told that once it starts changing color like that, it probably doesn't taste good anymore. So that one may end up in the compost. Not sure. And here's another one also changing colors. So I probably won't eat this one. But alas, here is one that I'm going to harvest today. And I will be making something very special out of that one. And another here hiding in between the leaves. I don't know if you can see it. I will be harvesting that one today. Now right under the zucchini leaves, I have some lettuce. Now here in zone 10, a uh, lettuce bolts very quickly in the summer. I found that I don't have any success with it unless I plant it under something else where it can get shade. So I think this lettuce is, is still going to taste good. It hasn't bolted quite yet, but it's starting to. So I'll probably harvest this this weekend along with a couple of tomatoes and we'll have a really delicious salad. Again, my brassicas are just suffering out here. I don't know where all these worms are coming from, the cabbage worms, but they're everywhere. The neem oil just doesn't seem to be warding them off this year that well. This is um, broccoli. I believe it's called broccoli rob, which is a delicious vegetable, but I don't think I'm going to get any this year. And right behind that, I have my Okoko basil, which is a Ghanaian basil. It has a wonderful flavor. As you can see, it's flowering. And behind that, I have more broccoli rob. And here, a smaller variety of squash. I always, my favorite color is purple, so I always have some kind of purple flower here in my garden. So here are some petunias that I just planted in the corners, just for a little pop of color. Now here is an experiment, guys. When I pruned some of my tomato plants a couple of weeks ago, I went ahead and put some of the pruned uh, branches in this vase of water, and look at this. They're growing roots so what i plan to do is find a good pot for this with some good nutritious soil stick it in and see if it'll grow into a full grown tomato plant i've never done that before but i think it'll work because i see those roots well they need water but they're doing pretty good next to the tomatoes i have chives these chives are delicious I love to come out here and grab a bunch of chives and just slice them thinly for garnish or to add to potatoes or pretty much any dish. They're delicious. Nice oniony flavor. And I've heard that the flowers are edible, but I never tried those myself. Next to that, I have some celery, two small celery plants. Here is the rainbow chard. Unfortunately, I expected a lot more growth from these. I uh, don't know what's going on. I feel like they're stunted. <laughs> Hopefully the flavor is good, not too bitter. But I just haven't been seeing the growth that I would expect from the chard this, from the rainbow chard this year. Here's a couple more rainbow chard. And here are some bull's blood beets. I did buy these as transplants from the garden center. And it's not quite ready to pick, they're not quite ready to pick yet, but I do see, if you look down there, I do see some beets. So that is very exciting. Beets are one of my favorite vegetables. I love to have them roasted and sliced on top of salad. Here is some curly kale. Flat parsley. Not doing too well. I think it's just too hot for some of these more delicate herbs but I'll keep an eye on that dino kale again suffering from a lot of pests 
color green. I think I'm also going to pull that out. And the color back there has gone to seed. I'm just letting it, it looks pitiful, but I'm letting it go to seed. I'm going to let those seed pods dry up and then I'll harvest all those seeds. My husband even asked me, is that supposed to look like that? <laughs> I said, yeah, for now. Okay, and on to this part of my garden. So I mentioned earlier that I bought a tray with, I believe, eight um, tomato transplants in it, and this is one of those eight. It's doing okay. I've noticed that a couple of the tomatoes that came from this plant have been, have looked like this. I'm not sure if that is a nutrient problem, a pest problem. Last year I had tomato, or excuse me, blossom in rot in a couple of my tomatoes, so I'm wondering if that's happening again. Could be a lack of water, I'm just not sure. This area doesn't get a ton of water, and it also does not get consistent sun throughout the day. But nevertheless, this plant is producing a little bit. And more geraniums there. And this plant is producing. I'm going to grab those tomatoes off of there for dinner tonight. And back here is another tomato from that same tray. And the elephant ear. So that's my June garden update here in my zone 10 garden and I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me today taking the time to watch my garden tour it means a lot to me again I know there are so many great gardeners on YouTube I'm no expert I just like to share what I do share my progress because I hope that it will help someone out there and if you have any advice for me I would love to hear it please leave it in the comments down below I do my best to respond to all comments within 24 hours Sometimes it doesn't happen, but I try. <laughs> so thank you so much for visiting me, Nell, here at HomeSense with Nell. If you're not a subscriber, go ahead and subscribe. It just takes a second. It doesn't cost anything. And it helps YouTube know that you enjoy my channel. Okay, talk to you later. Bye-bye. Buddy in the house. Oh my goodness, look at this. It's so heavy. It turns out that this mature zucchini, known as a marrow, is still perfectly fine to eat. So I went ahead and harvested it and made zucchini candy. Now the mature zucchini does have a thicker skin. A regular vegetable peeler will not remove the skin. So what you're gonna need is a nice sharp knife to cut this up and remove the peel from the outside. Take your time and be very careful because it is quite a big vegetable to deal with. Once the zucchini is cut into manageable pieces, go ahead and take a spoon and remove all the seeds 
and scrape out the stringy flesh just as you would a pumpkin. Next, carefully take a sharp knife and cut off the tough outer skin. All of these vegetable peels would make a great soup stock. What you can do is put a uh, freezer bag in your freezer and just add the vegetable peels and scraps as time goes along. And then when you're ready to make a stock, you can add those. Okay friends, so next you're gonna cut the flesh of the zucchini into large chunks for the dehydrator. Believe it or not, that one zucchini yielded 16 cups of cut up vegetable. So I went ahead and added that to my pot and then I added one large 48 ounce can of pineapple juice just to cover. is after it's been boiling for about five minutes you can see the zucchini is still hard and this is what it looks like after about 45 minutes of simmering in the pineapple juice as you can see some of the pineapple juice has evaporated and when I began to see that happening I partially covered the pot for the remainder of the cooking time the next step after that turn off the fire 
and remove your pineapple, or excuse me, your zucchini from the pineapple juice and let it drain. After that, you're gonna go ahead and place it on your dehydrator, uh, evenly spaced. Don't worry that the parts, the pieces are kind of large because they will shrink quite a bit once they start dehydrating. After placing your zucchini evenly on all of your dehydrating racks, go ahead and set the temperature to about 130 degrees and these will dehydrate for about 18 hours. This is what your zucchini will look like after about 12 hours. And I did taste one. It is very, very sweet. It tastes just like pineapple, um, but still had a lot of moisture. So I went ahead and let them continue dehydrating for the full 18 hours. And finally, after 18 hours, they're ready. So as you can see, they've lost quite a lot of volume. They've become very dry, which is great for storage. And after I removed them all from the dehydrator, I placed them into a plastic bag. Now you don't have to do the next step, it is optional. But in order to keep the pieces from sticking to each other, you can add about two tablespoons of powdered sugar and shake well to cover each piece. So friends, here's your finished zucchini candy. It's actually very good. My son, who doesn't even like zucchini, said, this is surprisingly good. And my husband said, it tastes exactly like pineapple. So go ahead and give it a try, guys. Let me know if you do. Please leave me a comment. Again, thanks for visiting Home Sense with Nell, and I will see you next time.